Daniel Maynard, you are summoned that on Tuesday the 23rd of November at Flying Horse Public House in Wessex Street, Stanley, you did unlawfully assault Mrs. Alice Dunn. Do you understand the charge? Yes. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Miss it. Is this a police prosecution? Uh, this is a private prosecution, Your Worships. I represent Mrs. Alice Dunn, who is the complainant in this case. My colleague, Miss Carey, appears for the defendant. Mrs. Dunn's case is that on the night in question, Daniel Maynard and a woman entered the Flying Horse public house where Mrs. Dunn is the manager's wife. She will say that in the course of his stay there, she found it necessary to refuse to serve him and indeed asked him to leave the premises, whereupon the defendant became abusive and refused to leave. Mrs. Dunn will also say that as she entered a passageway intending to call her husband for support, the defendant struck her several times in unprovoked assault. Mrs. Dunn, please. Mrs. Dunn, please. Mrs. Dunn. Mrs. Dunn, please. Mrs. Dunn, please. You reside at the Flying Horse Public House, 16 to 18 Wessex Street, Stamney. I do. How long have you been working in public houses and hotels? Oh, quite some time. Some 17 years? So you would say that you are very experienced in this particular kind of work, dealing with people? Oh, yes. Have you ever in those 17 years had occasion to bring a legal action against a customer? No. Very no. moving on, Mr. Jefferson. Mrs. Dunn, will you tell us in your own words what happened last Tuesday? Well, it was about quarter past ten. The usual crowd were a few new faces. Yes. Um, well, Stan had got... Uh, my husband had gone down into the cellar to set up a new barrel of bitter. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Uh, well, I, I was serving in the lounge when he came in. But to whom were you referring? Um, him. Maynard. Mr. Maynard. Well, he, he came into the lounge with a woman. A white woman. Had you ever seen the defendant or his companion before? No. Please continue. Well, she sat at a table and he, Maynard, came over to the bar. But I was busy serving another customer, a regular. Mr. Warren has the television yes, shop. And then what happened? Well, um, Maynard started tapping on the counter with his money. Mm -hmm. But I didn't take any notice. And then? Well, then he called out. What did he call out? Hey, you. Just like that. Hey, you. And what did you do? Well, I went on serving Mr. Warren. Uh, you didn't say anything to him? No. And then? Uh, well, then he, he sort of came down the bar and stood there sort of gawping at me. And, uh, well, I told him that if he wanted to be served, he'd have to behave himself. And, and couldn't he see that I was already serving another customer? And what was his reaction? Well, he, he went back along the bar and, and I went to serve him. Only then he said something and I told him I wasn't going to serve him. What was the something he said, Mrs. Dunn? He said, if me ears were as big as me mouth, I'd have heard him ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Those were his exact words. Near enough. And then? I, I asked him to leave. Mm -hmm. And what did he say to that? Oh, lots of things. And such as? Well, if I wanted him to leave, I'd... No. No, if I wanted him out, I'd have to put him out. And then you decided to enlist the support of your husband? Yes. I lifted the bar flap and I went uh, into the passage. Is that a private passageway? Well, it leads to the cellar door. Uh, but private? Oh, yes, yes, but he came in after me and he, he sort of... Well, he stood there in front of me and I couldn't get past, so... So, um, I shouted for Stan and... And then he called me a white slag. So I, I called for Stan again, and, and then he hit me. Where? In the face. And then Stan came up, and well, I mean, he could see straight away that something was wrong. And they started arguing, and well, I went into the street and, and found a policeman, and he talked to the station on one of those, um, you know, one of those things, you know, and about. Two minutes, a police van arrived. Oh, Mrs. Dunn, one question I must ask you, as I'm quite sure it will be raised by my charming colleague. Was it anything in any way to do with Mr. Maynard's colour that may have influenced you in refusing to serve him? Absolutely not. You're quite sure? Sir. 
Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Miss Carey? Mrs. Dunn. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Maynard entered the pub, and you were serving Mr. Warren. Yes. His wife, his companion was, in fact, um, Mrs. Maynard, sir. Oh, thank you, Miss Carey. His wife sits at a table near the bar, the door, and Mr. Maynard makes his way over to the bar. Yes. Were there many customers that night? Mm, not many, no, about more oh, half a dozen or so. They're mostly in the other two bars. Hmm. Mr. Maynard has to wait for some time while you were still serving Mr. Warren. Yes. What was Mr. Warren drinking? Is this relevant? Very possibly, Mr. Chapman. What was he drinking, Mrs. Dunn? Scotch. With what? Soda? Ice? Dry ginger? Oh, no, neat. He was by himself? Yes, he was alone. So it took you all that time to serve Mr. Warren one neat Scotch whiskey? Well, not all the time, no. What took the remainder of the time? We nattered a bit. You nattered? Yes. While Mr Maynard was waiting to be served? Well, it, it, it's part of the job. Then Mr Maynard started tapping his money on the counter. Yes. What sort of tapping? Just tapping. Could you demonstrate for us? Something like that. Irritable. Oh, it was, yes. But you took no notice. Oh. You went on nattering to Mr. Warren. Yes. Then Mr. Maynard called out. Hey, you, yes. And you still ignored. You still continued your conversation with Mr. Warren. Well, I wasn't going to serve him when he was behaving like that. Like what, Mrs. Dunn? Rudely. By trying to attract your attention to get served. He was being deliberately rude. And you told him so? Well, I, I did after he started staring and being... He wanted scared. to be served, he'd have to behave himself, and couldn't he see you were serving another customer? Yes. But you weren't. Well, what? And by that time, you'd already served Mr. Warren. You were just nattering. Oh, your worship. Then, when you finally did go to serve Mr. Maynard, he made the remark. Exactly like I said. Hmm? Was this the first thing he said to you? Straight out when I went to serve him. But he didn't attempt to order the drinks he waited for so long? No, we just said it. And you said nothing to him? Nothing that might have provoked such a remark? I never opened my mouth to him. I'm quite sure. Well, I know what I said. How did you ask him to leave? I just told him to go. To get out? Yes. Could you have said sod off? Certainly not. I don't use that kind of language. Oh, if he says I did, he's a liar. He started to say lots of things. If I wanted him out, I'd have to put him out. That's what he said. And what else? Well, a couple of these all sorts of things. Oh, I can't remember. Are you sure he made any remarks, Mrs. Dunn? He was damned rude. And so you went to get your husband? Yes, to help me, of course. Help you do what? Talk to him. Surely all the talking was over from your account. I put it to you, Mrs. Dunn, and you told my client you were going to get your husband to sling him out. Oh, I never said I that. I also put it to you that you threatened him. Threatened? You told him he would be for it if Stan laid hands on him. He said that? Did you say it, Mr. I Stan? did not. Then you went into the passageway and called your husband. Well, he didn't give me a chance. He came in after me. So he must have passed your friend, Mr. Warren. I suppose. Who had witnessed everything. Most of Mr. it. Mr. Warren didn't make any attempt to uh, stop him coming after you. Uh, well, he was just about to leave. To leave? Well, it was nearly closing time. So Mr. Warren was not involved? Well, I could look. 
look after myself. I mean, you have to in our trade. Yes, I'm sure you can. And then it was you tried to get to the cellar door. Well, yes, but he stood in front of me, so I called out. Mm -hmm. And that's when he called you a white slag and hit you. Yes. About the face, several times. Yes. Your face was marked. You had bruises, a black eye or something. No. Unmarked. I was lucky. Yes, you were indeed. To have escaped a savage and assault, as you describe, unmarked. Then your husband arrived and started talking to Mr. Maynard. Well, arguing. Not fighting? No. Didn't you later on tell the police constable outside that they were fighting? Would it be right to say that Mr. Maynard's arrest caused an indignant reaction from some of your other customers? Well, some of them would be a bit silly, shouting. At the police? Well, some of them. At you? One or two. Objecting to the arrest of Mr. Maynard. They were drunk. Uh, Thank uh, you, yes, Mrs. Yes, Dunn. Yes, indeed. Uh, do you wish to re-examine? No, no. Stand down, Mrs. Dunn. I now Stanley. call Stanley Dunn. Yes. Stanley Dunn. Stanley Dunn, please. Stanley Dunn. Mr. Dunn, would you tell us in your own words what happened on the night in question? Well, I were only in on the last half of the schmossel. I were down in the cellar putting on a, another barrel when uh, I heard. Alice shouting, uh, that's my wife, very loud, unusual for her, and I'd finished anyway, so I, I popped up to see what was going on. Can you explain very carefully to the court exactly what confronted you? Well, Alice was trying to get past this fella here who was barring away, with his back to me, and I, I wonder what going on, because the passageway is, is private, you see. Yes. Well, uh, then uh, Alice saw me, and she said um, something about this fella hitting her. She, she was very upset, so I knew at once that something unusual had happened. Why was that, Mr. Dunn? Well, it takes a lot to get my missus going. We've been in this business a long time. There aren't many situations that she can't handle. But in this case, she was upset. Yeah, very. She said that this fella had been rude and insulted, so she'd refused him service. Ask him to leave, and he wouldn't, just went on slanging her. You worship and then when she yes, Miss Gary, this is hearsay evidence, Mr. Dunn. Uh, this means that you may only tell the court what you yourself saw and heard. Oh, I'm sorry. You had a short conversation with your wife. What did you do then? Uh, well, I, uh, I, I went over to him. He was still standing there? Uh, yes, yeah. Large as life. I, I told him I thought he ought to leave. I didn't want any trouble, and I didn't suppose he did either. And what did he say to that? Well, to, to be perfectly honest, I, I couldn't really understand half what he did say. What was the gist of it? Well, of course, he, he denied it, you know. Said she wouldn't serve him because he was coloured. I knew that were a load of rubbish. Why? Well, Alice is not like that. Don't matter what colour they are, as long as they behave themselves. Sight against the law. And then, what happened? Well, uh, then the police came. Uh, There's a sergeant and two constables. Uh, Alice had been a bit premature, so said we were fighting, but I explained to the sergeant she was very upset and, well, we didn't want any trouble. And I, well, I thought, well, why should we just forget it? I mean, we work damned hard. I don't see why we should have to put up with that sort of thing. So you decided to bring charges? Y yes. Mr. Dunn, I have to ask you this, as my learned colleague has seen fit to raise the matter. There, there was some trouble when the police came to take the accused? Well, no, not trouble, not really. What happened? Well, the house is in a, a very rough area. Just the sight of a blue uniform, enough to turn the beer sour. So it was not, as my learned friend would suggest, a serious disturbance? The only thing that had seriously disturbed that lot of beer for put me towels up five minutes early. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn, 
Did you see the accused strike your wife at any time? Uh, no. Did anyone, to your knowledge, see Mr. Maynard strike your wife? Well, they were in the passageway, you see. Not even Mr. Warren? Uh, I don't think so. Didn't you ask him? Well, he, he'd gone away on personal business. So, didn't you ask him before he left? Well, I did try to phone the very next day, but he'd already left, gone abroad. So no one saw this alleged assault on your wife? No. When you came up from the cellar, you saw that your wife was upset. Yeah. Hysterical? No. Well, not hysterical. Alice is not the hysterical sort. And she told you that Maynard had hit her? Did she did. And you went to talk to him? I didn't. I didn't want any trouble. Hmm? Did he seem to be composed and in control? Well, yes. Didn't that strike you as rather odd, Mr Dunn? One moment this man is supposed to have assaulted your wife, and the next he is quite composed and in control. Answer my question, Mr. Dunn. Didn't it strike you as rather odd? Well, you... You, you, you can flare up, you know. I, I've got a bit of an Irish temper myself. Really? Yet, when confronted by a distressed wife who accuses a man of assaulting her, you talk to him. I put it to you, Mr. Dunn, that what you saw didn't fit with what you were told had happened. That Mr. Maynard was as surprised as you were at your wife's accusations. I know. That you tried to calm her and sort out this absurd situation. But before you had the chance, Mrs. Dunn was out in the street telling a patrolling constable that you were involved in a fight with Mr. Maynard. Yes. I also put it to you that by the time the police arrived, there was nothing you could do but support your wife. In fact, wasn't it Mrs. Dunn who insisted on charges being brought? Well, if, if my wife tells me something, I, I believe her. We, we've been married 20 years and Alice is not a liar. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Stand down. Richard, I'm going to join you. Oh, that's my case, George. Miss Carey, I have just the one that Miss my client, Mr. Maynard, now. Let the possible witness stand, please. What religion are you? Baptist, miss. You take the testament in your right hand and read from the card. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give in this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Your name is Daniel Albert Maynard. You live at 8 Elm Street, Stamney. And you are a refuse collector. Yes, miss. Now, Mr. Maynard, you've heard what Mr. and Mrs. Dunn have told the court. Is this what happened? Some of it. Some of it, no. You went to have a drink with your wife. It was an anniversary. Six years. Take it easy. I, I said, let's go and have a drink. We don't often, but, well, this was special. You entered the pub and Mrs. Maynard sat down and you went over to the bar to get the drinks, is that right? Standing there. And Mrs. Dunn was serving? Not when I came in. The man was drinking, she weren't serving, she, she was talking. Did she seem to be aware that you were waiting? She looked a couple of times, sort of glanced. Is it right that you started tapping your money on the counter? Yes, but... Well, not the way she showed you. And you show us. Well, I, I do it all the time. It don't mean nothing. I do it all the time, sort of dr drumming like. And then you shouted at Mrs. Dunn. I didn't shout. I called out like she said again. I was wondering when she was going to serve me, so I said, hey, you. Didn't mean it to sound bad. I, I just called. Are you saying that you meant no offense? Yes, miss. What did Mrs. Dunn do? She acted like I wasn't there. The television shop man told her I was waiting. Pointed. And she still ignored you? Yes, miss. 
Any other day I would have gone, but, well, this was special. So uh, I went down the bar closer. Staring at Mrs. Dunn? Uh, not staring, looking. Waiting for her to stop talking. And did she speak to you eventually? Like she said, I'll nose in the sky. I didn't take much notice. I went back where I was and I, I waited some more. Hmm? And what happened when she finally did come to serve you? Well, I never said what she said I did. Did you uh, say if her ears were as big as her mouth, she'd have heard you ten minutes ago? No. No, I didn't. What did you say to her? Well, about the ten minutes, and even then I, I made a joke of it. Did you order the drinks? Yes, miss. But she wasn't listening. She was up on her toes. Ah, looking for it. And did she ask you to leave? She told me to sod off. After then I was going, but then I thought, and I said I wanted to see the man, the manager. She said if the manager comes, he's gonna throw me out. I said, what is this all about? All I want is a quiet drink with my wife. Then she goes a little mad, looks at me like a mad thing. The television shop man is standing there looking at us. I shrug my shoulders at him and, well, he looks back at me like he didn't know either what this is all about. Then she goes into the hallway and I followed her. Didn't know it was private, it looked just like a hallway. Yes, now, Mr. Maynard, this part is most important. You've heard Mrs. Dunn accuse you of hitting her. Did you hit her? No. I don't hit no one. She started saying things. About you? About my wife. Said something about Nan being a... This thing she said I called her a, a white. Slag. That's what she said Nan was. Don't even know what the word is, but the way she said it, I knew it was barred, so I said it back. Don't have no one barred more than my wife, so I said it back. But she said it first, and that's the truth. So you say you didn't strike her or push her or touch her in any way? No. Well, uh, we were only there for a little while, then, then he come up. Mr. Dunn? He was okay to me at first. He could see she went on about me, but he knew. It was okay until the police came. Then he started saying things were different. Well, did you tell the police what had happened? Well, I explained to police, and it was more quiet at the police station, but then it was it was too late. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Amy. Mr. Maynard, did Mrs. Dunn at any time make any sort of reference to your color? She never said nothing, but... Uh, Not at any time? She didn't have to say anything. You could tell. Mr. Maynard, we are only concerned with facts. What did or what did not happen. Now, you had to wait a little time for service. Is that so uncommon these days? She was just talking. So you went through this pantomime to attract Mrs. Dunn's attention. Now, whether or not you intended offence, Mrs. Dunn thought that you were behaving badly. She asked you to leave. Did you know that a licensee has a perfect right to refuse a customer in certain circumstances? I know. And yet you refused to go? It wasn't right. You had been refused service and asked to leave the premises, and you refused. I asked to see the man in charge. I asked politely. And Mrs. Dunn explained that he would only support her in uh, asking you to leave? It's not the way she said it. Not, not our fancy like that. And you were still done not leave, although she asked repeatedly. I wanted to see the man in charge. Where did you follow Mrs. Dunn into the passageway? To talk a sensible. You say that you didn't know the passageway was private? I didn't. Although there was a notice on the wall saying exactly that? I didn't see no notice. It appears that you only see and hear what you want to. What did Mrs. Dunn say to you? when she realized that you'd followed her into the passageway? She told me to go. And again, this time on private ground, you refused. Now, you say it was then that she made this extraordinary remark about your wife. Yes, she said it, and I said it back. Although you didn't know what it meant. Yes, sir. What is your job, Mr. Maynard? Dustman. And you've never heard the word slag before? 
Now, both Mr. and Mrs. Dunn state that you barred her way, wouldn't let her pass. I just stood there. Didn't do nothing to stop her. So both Mr. and Mrs. Dunn are lying. I just stood there. The hallway is very narrow. Only room for one person, really. Mrs. Dunn wanted to get to the cellar door to call her husband for support. You stood in her way, wouldn't let her pass? She could have got by if she wanted. Then why did she have to call? Shout to her husband. It was because you wouldn't let her get to the door, isn't that right? She could if she wanted. Did she tried to pass you? She pushed at me. Wanting to pass? Saying those things. Precisely because you were preventing her from talking to her husband. She pushed. I just stood there. In other words, you stopped Mrs. Dunn from passing? Yes. Not five minutes ago, Mr. Maynard, you told the court that you never struck, pushed or touched Mrs. Dunn in any way. Yet now you admit that you stopped her from passing? I never hit her. I don't think you know what you did do. When she, as you say, insulted your wife, what did you do? I thought, damn you woman. And you still insist you didn't slap Mrs. Dunn? That woman has a bad tongue saying I hit her a lot. But you did slap her? No, sir. Not once? Not slap, not really. What did happen? I was angry at her talking like that. Doing all the things she'd done. Not serving me. Talking to me like I was nothing. Didn't want trouble. I can't afford to get into trouble. But I wasn't going to take it on that day. Not that day. That day was special. So you slapped her? Just like I would a child, no harder. Around the face? No, sir, no. On her arm. I slept her arm. And only once, and that's the God's truth. That is all, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Maynard. You may stand down. I think it is quite clear that there are a lot of side issues to this case. My learned friend talks about facts, but cold facts often distort what really happened. The clash of personality, the atmosphere of the moment. Mr. Maynard has admitted hitting Mrs. Dunn once on the arm, and though technically an assault, I suggest it was more the result of frustration at what I can only call gross provocation. It's quite clear that there are two equal and opposite sides to this occurrence. The provoking behavior of Mrs. Dunn and the gradual breakdown of self-control by Mr. Maynard. I submit that neither is excusable. Thank you, Miss Gary. Rise and face the magistrates, please. Mr. Maynard, while we agree with your counsel that you were indeed provoked by Mrs. Dunn, I may say I found this aspect of the hearing very distasteful. We nevertheless do find that you did assault her, although it, fortunately it was not a serious assault. You'll find two pounds. It seems a pity that such cases as this have to come this far. One would have thought they could have been settled out of court or by a bind over. I naturally considered such courses, Your Worship, but was instructed to proceed with the case. Very well. Thank you. you may stand down, Mr. Maynard. What about the money? You know, the warrant officer will show you where to pay it. Your Worship, the court three have taken the two dangerous drivings, at least number 10, John Burgess, unlawful gaming. Thank you. John Burgess, please. <laughs> 